Omegle is an interesting place. You can meet all sorts of people and see all sorts of crazy things. I've been told over and over again about how shady the website is. I have experienced some shady things from all the times I've been on that site, but being the overly curious, thrill-seeking teenager, I continued to visit it, sneaking out a laptop and staying up late hours just to see what I could find. It happened one night. I was scrolling through my phone, wide awake when I decided to try Omegle to cut the boredom. It was around midnight and my parents were dead asleep by then, so I snuck out to my dad's office to use his laptop. I locked the door and tried to be as quiet as possible. I turned on the table lamp and fired up his laptop. For the first hour, I saw the usual stuff and creepy old men lying in the bed with a camera tilted directly at their hairy chests. I was getting fed up, so I decided to chat with one more person before heading to bed. I had no idea what to expect when I clicked next. The video feed was completely black on the other person's end. I thought that he or she forgot to turn on the webcam, so I typed. Your webcam's off. A few minutes later, the person on the other side replied, I can see you. I looked closely at the screen, and that's when I saw it. Two eyes stared directly back at me from the darkness. It gave me chills once I noticed this, and then suddenly the lights turned on from the other person's end. I saw a girl staring at me. She was dressed like the infamous Annabelle doll. At first, it felt really weird to see her like that, but then I realized how detailed she had been with her makeup. She wore red ribbons on her twin braids with an excessive amount of red blush on her cheeks. Her eyes were done like those anime cartoons which made them appear wide and scary. She watched me without blinking and then slowly smiled. There was something in her smile that didn't feel right. Upon realizing that it had been quite some time since I haven't said a single word to her, I felt embarrassed. Um, wow. Hi. You look different. Do you like it? The voice that came out of her didn't match her attire at all. It was coarse yet squeaky at the same time, as if she was not using her real voice and trying to be someone else. But anyway, I smiled back and said, Yeah, you just chalked me. I love doing that to people. <laughs> she laughed weirdly. So what's your name? Annabelle. And you are? Of course. Well, I'm Justin. How old are you, Annabelle? What do you think? Um, I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell with all that makeup. <laughs> Her face suddenly changed. The smile disappeared. She looked me up and down like I've offended her. She brought her face extremely close to the screen and made very creepy eye contact. What are you doing? Trying to see inside you. What? She started laughing hysterically. <laughs> her behavior made me uncomfortable. For a moment, I thought to disconnect the call and go to bed. But as they say, curiosity kills the cat. I stayed. Um... So what is your real name? She tilted her head to one side and said, I just told you. I realized she has no interest in revealing her true identity, so I got quiet. The next question came from her side. Tell me, Justin, do you like hide and seek? <laughs> That's a cliche. Answer me when I'm asking you a question! Her sudden scream caught me off guard. Whoa, why are you screaming at me? Because I'm real as hell, Justin! You know you're using your dad's office while he's dead asleep! Isn't it true? How... how do you know that? <laughs> I can see inside your head. I'm Annabelle. At this point, I had had enough. I went to disconnect the call, but no matter how many times I tried, the site didn't close. Glitches started appearing on the screen, but she stayed right there, watching me with her terrifying grin, carving sick joy from my moment of tension. 
Suddenly, she took out this big knife. Wanna see a magic trick? She got up and walked to the other side of the room. I watched her opening the closet door, followed by the sobbing of a woman. I couldn't see her face, but only heard her scream. No, please! Let me go! Please! I won't tell anyone! What happened next will be hard to explain in words. It was insanity. She went full crazy and started stabbing the woman. I could hear the ruthless slashes accompanied by painful sobs. I watched it in horror. My body was paralyzed in fear. I couldn't move no matter how hard I tried. At one point, the woman's sobs died down. The stabbing stopped as well. Then Annabelle turned towards me and she came back to her seat. The bloody knife and her bloody hands made me nauseous. She kept the knife on the desk and brought her face extremely close to the screen. Want to see another magic trick, Justin? I was shivering. Drops of sweat covered my forehead. Annabelle touched her face with her big hands and started rubbing off the makeup on her face. I had no idea something even more shocking was waiting for me. Once the makeup started to come off, the true face appeared. And Annabelle wasn't a woman. She was a full-grown, middle-aged man. His rough, prickly beard surfaced from the white skin. Happy now, Justin. You wanted to see the real me, right? Ah! I screamed and ran to my parents' bedroom. I kept banging on their door until I fainted. When I woke up the next morning, I was down with a high fever. I couldn't tell my parents exactly what I saw last night. They found me unconscious at their doorstep and my dad's laptop open into a black screen. Days later, I was watching TV before dinner when my dad shifted to the news channel. That's when I saw the man dressed as Annabelle one more time. He was finally on the news. Cops caught him in a shady parking lot. He was trying to dispose of the body of the woman in the dumpster. The psycho cut her body into pieces and threw them around all over the city. When the cops searched his house, they found her head and the rest of her torso. His name was Miles Locker, and he was named the Omegle Killer. He would kidnap random girls and bring them into the apartment, and then dress as some famous movie's character and perform their murder of Omegle. He called himself a true performer, putting up the sickest live show in front of the world. The investigation is still going on. The cops are trying to locate his other victims. I have never been on Omegle since that night. Hey guys, my name is Lucas. Maybe many of you know me from the golden age of YouTube pranksters when channels were dedicated to making pranks on the street online games, or platforms like Omegle. I belonged to the latter, and oh boy, it was a blast. I used to be the king of the jokes on Omegle. I laughed at the poor person who had the bad luck to meet me. But one day, the one who had the bad luck was me, as I encountered something far beyond my comprehension, something that was just evil. That day, I was recording one of my YouTube videos. The joke was based on the fact that when a person would see me, they would see me with a Shrek filter. After a few seconds, a jump scare of a nightmarish version of Shrek would appear and the person would have the scare of his life. Everything started great, I was getting some good reactions from people. But suddenly, a girl appeared on the camera. Hey, uh, do you like my doll? Yes, I love your doll. Do you like Shrek? Shrek is very cute. Hey, would you like to play with my doll? Of all the reactions I had seen, this was the one that surprised me the most. The girl had not reacted at all to the jump scare. It was as if she didn't care at all that I tried to scare her. All she did was talk to me about the scary doll that was rocking in a chair behind her. 
I'm not going to lie, the doll was terrifying. At first glance, it looked like a simple doll, very much like the one in Annabelle movies, but not the Hollywood version, but the real one. The girl was terrified. She was crying her eyes out, but she looked at me with a big smile, as if acting like everything was okay. Honestly, the first thing that popped into my head was that she was another YouTuber, so I laughed and played <laughs> along. Of course I'd love to play a game with your doll. What do you like to play? Poker, Need for Speed, or maybe a soccer game? You'll see. Tell me, would you like to keep my doll? Of course. I wouldn't know how you'd send her to me. Are you flirting? Say it! Say you'd like to keep my doll! At that moment, I got a little scared, but I decided to go on with the joke. I was still filming, and this was still great content, even if it was at my expense. I'd like to keep your doll. Oh my god! You have no idea how sorry I am, but it's your problem now. And without another word, the girl closed Omegle. Wow, that happened. I must admit that I was a little uncomfortable with the previous girl, but I was sure that in just a matter of days I would find myself in some horror video compilation with funny reactions. That thought calmed me down. When the next camera appeared, I continued with my Shrek routine. I scared some teenagers with the jump scare. They took it well enough and laughed, but when one of them spoke to me, my blood ran cold. Dude, you're going all in. You even have that scary doll behind you. Seeing my camera, I was terrified. The same doll that was with the previous girl was on top of my bed. I quickly turned around to look at my camera, but nothing was there. Oh, good job, guys. You're with the previous girl, aren't you? Have I been hacked? <laughs> nice one! We won't fall for that one. Come on, guys, the joke is basic. I've seen it in several videos. Without giving them a chance to answer me, I moved on to the next camera. But the doll was still there. I restarted my Omegle browser, closed and opened the tab, but nothing changed. The doll was on my bed. Thinking of a quick solution, I opened my webcam from the computer, and when I saw the doll in the same position, I was perplexed. What kind of hacking is this? Without realizing it, I must admit that this scared me a lot more than I thought it would. I unplugged the power supply from the computer and went to the closet to fix the slippers I had dropped. Once I finished, I went back to my computer with the plan of reconnecting it. Maybe the hacking problem was already solved, but to my surprise, something else happened. The computer was not only on, but it had an Omegle chat open. My camera was on, but the other person was off. This can't be. Do you still think this is a hack, Lucas? How... how do you know my name? I didn't come to explain things. I came to play. That's what you wanted, right? No, I don't want that. Hey, would you like to play with my doll? Of course I'd love to play a game with your doll. What do you like to play? Poker, Need for Speed, or maybe a soccer game? Who are you? Just someone who wants to play, Lucas. And what do you want to play? Since you're so fond of asking questions, we'll play a quiz. You can start. Leave me alone. Please! Come on, Lucas. It's just a game. Play. What if I walk out the door? Lucas... I won't answer that question. Because I'd like to see you try. It's my turn. Do you know where I am now? I don't... I, I don't know. Come on. Yes, you do. You're... You're in my bed. I congratulate you. I knew you had it in you. 
Do you think you'll survive tonight? I thought it was my turn to ask. You thought wrong. Do you think you'll survive tonight? Yes. Ah! I told you, it's not good to lie. Please, let me go. Let's play another game. Do you remember the girl who was with me before? You'll be her. Please, I don't want anyone else to go through this. For every camera you pass without them agreeing to stay with me, I'll take one step closer to you. If I get to where you are... <laughs> you lose. No, I won't do this to anyone. Turn around, Lucas. As I turned around, a black shadow stood in the doorway of my room. I couldn't make it out, but it was huge and intimidating. It had a human silhouette, and I could recognize a hospital gown. From now on, you can't turn around again. But I assure you that with each camera, I will be closer to you. Let the game begin! Immediately after saying these words, the first camera was activated, and some girls appeared. Hey, girls. Do you like my doll? Freak! Every time I said this, people rejected me. Some would freak out, others would scoff. None of it mattered. The only thing I could think about was that every second that passed, I could feel something behind me getting closer. My skin crawled with each person who jumped me, and I felt colder and colder. At the last one, I could feel him behind me, breathing violently. I could feel his smile without even seeing it. I couldn't breathe from the terror. I could hardly pronounce the words anymore. Hey guys, you like my doll? Hey, we love it almost as much as your mom. Great, would you like to play with her? <laughs> with your mom or with the doll? With both! Say, you wanna keep my doll? What a weirdo. Goodbye, nerd. I wanna keep his doll. As soon as the boy skipped me, I could hear the thing behind me approach me one last time. There were no cameras. The game was over. Don't hurt me. I won the game, and one of the men said he wanted to stay with you. After a few seconds of silence, I heard a voice in my ear. Ah, the fun we would have had together. And suddenly, the cold was gone. I turned around behind me, and there was no one. I looked at the bed and the doll was gone. I looked at the monitor and the computer had turned off. Finally, it was over. After that day, I could never log in to Omegle again. I told my friends about it and made several YouTube videos, but no one ever believed me. It died as another internet urban legend. As time went by, the Omegle pranksters stopped being popular. Even though horror channels are more successful than ever, I decided not to join that trend. I had already seen more horror in one hour than I wanted to see in my entire life. I opened my laptop. It was a dreary day, and it had been raining for what felt like weeks. I needed to talk to someone. I needed to feel connected to the outside world. I went to my usual chat site, Omegle. Omegle was what I used when I wanted to meet people, make friends, and feel like I wasn't alone in the world. It was anonymous, which was perfect for me. I didn't have to worry about anyone knowing my name or where I lived. Of course, I knew where everyone else lived. I had a plugin that gave me the IP address of everyone I chatted with. As I waited for the first user to connect, I traced the IP of the last person I chatted with. St. Louis, Missouri. Not too far away, actually. The first user connected, and I smiled. Hey there, how are you today? I'm good, thanks for asking. How about you? It was a bald man, with not a hair on his head. He had no real defining features, no beard, no facial hair, and no real distinguishing marks. What was interesting, however, was his eyes. One eye was blue and the other was green. 
It was quite unnerving. I'm good. Just a little bored. Bored, huh? Well, I'm sure we can fix that. What's your name? I hesitated. I didn't want to give away my real name. You can call me John. John, huh? Well, it's nice to meet you, John. I'm Andy. Andy didn't seem like a threat. He was just a regular guy chatting on Omegle. We talked for a while, about nothing in particular. He asked me about my hobbies, and I asked him about his. Eventually, the conversation turned to more personal things. So, John, what do you do for a living? I'm a student. Oh? What are you studying? I hesitated again. I didn't want to tell him the truth. I didn't want to tell anyone the truth. I'm studying history. Interesting. I've always been fascinated by history. What's your favorite period? What was a period? I fidgeted in my seat, my mind racing. All of them. Andy laughed. <laughs> I like your enthusiasm, but I can tell you're not being truthful with me, John. I swallowed. I looked at my plug-in. I'd see where he lived, and I could decide what to do from there. As I looked at the plug-in, though, I felt a weird sensation running through my body. It was like someone had poured ice water down my spine. My plug-in was glitching, with weird lines running across the screen, and then it went blank. What the hell? I said aloud. It had never done this before, and I felt as if I was being watched. I looked at my computer's monitor cable, checking the connection. It seemed fine. John. Andy asked, but his voice sounded different this time, and when I raised my head back to look at the screen, he was nowhere to be seen. John, do you know what happened two years ago on the day? What the heck? John, do you remember what you did two years ago on the day your sister disappeared? My heart stopped. My sister had been missing for two years, and the police had never been able to find her. They had ruled her missing. What the heck do you want from me? It's not what I want, John. It's what she wants. I felt a cold hand touch my shoulder, and I spun around, my heart racing. My sister was standing behind me, her eyes cold and dead. Her black, soulless eyes sprouted from a decaying body wearing nothing but a shabby white robe. The blood from where I had stabbed her pooled around her feet, and the knife was still in her hand. S -s sarah Hello, brother. They never found out what you did to me, did they? But I know. I remember when you killed me. I remember everything! I tried to scream, but no sound came out. I tried to run, but my legs were like lead. I was paralyzed with fear. I stared at her and let out another involuntary scream as I saw the man from the camera, the man I had been chatting with, staring at us from the doorway of my room. His eyes seemed to glow as he watched, a satisfying grin spreading across his face. And then Sarah raised the knife and started towards me. I felt blood rush to my head and I finally managed to move. I struggled backward toward the corner of my room where I grabbed for my knife. Sarah was upon me before I could even stand up. She stabbed me in the leg and I screamed in pain. The man from the doorway just watched, still grinning. I managed to stand up and face her. I was bleeding heavily from my leg, but I could barely feel it. All I felt was the overwhelming anger for my sister, my dead sister, who stood before me. You deserve to die! You deserved it! They never gave me attention after you were born! They always loved you more! She lunged at me again, and I sidestepped her. I grabbed my knife from the corner of the room and held it out in front of me. Stay back! Just stay back! Sarah just laughed and kept coming. I stabbed her in the stomach, but it didn't even faze her. She just kept coming, her knife raised, ready to kill me. Not yet, Sarah. I turned rapidly and saw the man in the doorway, his grin wider than ever as he watched, his eyes glowing with lust for the situation at hand. Let him suffer one more day. We'll be back tomorrow. And with that, Sarah disappeared into thin air. 
the man in the doorway just laughed and then vanished as well. I collapsed to the floor, my legs still bleeding and my mind still racing. I know she's coming back tomorrow and that I'm going to die. And I know that I deserve this. And all those people I've killed since. Every person I found through Omegle, I killed. They were all just like Sarah, snatching people away from their loved ones, tearing them apart. And I enjoyed it, every second of it. So why do they want to take this away from me? I pulled back the curtain which hid the painting of my family, the one with my sister. Taking it carefully off the wall, I set it aside and etched my body through the hole in the wall where I had put her. The stench was almost gone now. It had been two years, of course. I dragged my leg along with me, bleeding as I limped through the low tunnel. Finally though, I reached the spot where she had been, where I had left her. There was nothing. Her body was gone and the air was already fresher. I could feel my heart beat, every loud beat of my heart as I stumbled backwards, falling as I tripped. I screamed as I heard a snap. My good leg was at a weird angle as I laid there, crying and sniffling. I couldn't find the strength to drag myself out. My sister's grave would be mine as well.